There are tons of tropes out there in the world, like enemies to lovers, the chosen one, love triangles, you name it, it's there. And after reading this book, there should be a new one added to this list, where the main character supposedly stabs her love interest, and it's called romance. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Safa, and today I'm going to be giving you a spoiler-free review on A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. If you didn't know, this is a adult fantasy romance series, which is the prequel story to the famous From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and it basically follows the events of our main character, Serafina Mariel, where she has been bestowed this role upon her birth to be a consort to this god called the Primal of Death. And she's also labeled as this maiden type character. And because she's a consort to the Primal, she has been restricted on her experiences and what she can and can't do, and as such being very isolated her entire life. And the reason that she is chosen to become his consort is because the humans believe that there is this rot that's been plaguing the lands, that's literally decaying the vegetation, and that the only way to save the lands from this disease is to kill the primal of death. So by becoming his consort, Serafina as such will make him fall in love with her and kill him because she's been trained in the art of assassination. So that's kind of the gist of the story. This video will contain no spoilers, so it's spoiler free for this book. However, it might contain mild spoilers for the From Blood and Ash series since there is a bit of references made from this to this book and just keep that in mind. So I rated this book four out of five stars. And I'm just going to be going into why I did that based on what I did not like and what I did like. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So what I did not like, the main, main, main issue I had was the replication of character personalities from From Blood and Ash. The main character, literally Serafina, is a replica of Poppy, except she just has blonde hair. Nykos is basically Castile, but a toned down version. Then you have Ector and Sion, who are basically Kieran and Delano, except they're just the god version and Kieran and Delano are the woven. That's literally it. So personality-wise, all these characters are just mirror images of each other. There's, I felt like there's no originality. A lot of those quirks and personality traits you read about in From Blood and Ash, like Poppy being violent, asking so too many questions, going around stabbing people, is just literally copied and pasted into this book, into Serafina. Now, you can understand that because Seraphine is technically an ancestor of Poppy, you know, you would see some very similar traits because of that. However, it just feels like I'm just reading Poppy, except physically she looks different. That's literally it. And yeah, that's like just my main issue. Another huge issue I had with this is the slow pacing nature of this book. Jennifer, although her writing style is very good, she writes very descriptively and elaborates a lot on the events and scenes that go on. Because she really wants the reader to envision what's happening in the world around her and get a feel for the emotions the character is feeling in the scene. Which, you know, is understandable. It's good to see that in a book. However, she tends to drag that on too, too long. She has, like, an issue with getting to the point right away and just moving on. She just, it just slows the book down. And it was just too long, more too uh, much too long than it should have been, in my opinion. Other issues relating to the slow pacing nature is the fact that it took me over 300 pages to get like really invested in this book. Now, although the beginning, it was still relevant and I was still interested, I wasn't hooked onto it yet because you don't see a lot of that major, I would say political intrigue or like character development or even like integral people who are necessary to the development of the story until that halfway point. Cause that's where a lot of that main stuff and like really tricky situations really occur. Also at times it can be quite info dumpy, but because I've read from Blood and Ash, it is understandable, like I can get it, but people who haven't, it would be confusing as hell for you. So read from Blood and Ash first. Last thing, a part of this list is that the events can be quite predictable in this book. Okay, so let's move on to what I did like about this book. So the first things first is Jadis. Nektas's young baby daughter. She's a dragon. She's so adorable. It's not a spoiler. She is adorable. And I love the way Jennifer integrates her in the scenes because she's always described as hopping around and like ramming her head into like these boulders and other people. And she's so cute because she's chirping and like she's trying to fly but she can't because she's the baby. And it's just really cute because 
um, the scenes where she's really integrated in, you see a much softer side of these characters, like Naitos in particular, because they're very close and he helps her fall asleep because she snuggles with him and like, you know, puts her to bed and that kind of thing. It's just really, really cute. And I love that her being in the scenes, you see that kind of side of the characters. I just love that. Other things I really enjoyed was the themes that was really integrated in the story. So the first theme would be freedom of choice. The second one that really came across was this idea of the value of life. Now, interestingly, Nyktos and Serafina have been burdened with this kind of decision made before they were born to carry out no matter what that is very much like you do this or you die kind of thing. And they've never really had that time to experience life as it should have been, like the joys and the sadness and just the experiences of living in general. And I think what's really interesting about it is that the way they experience life is with each other. And you see that really grow and develop throughout the plot. And that's what I really liked about it. My favorite character in this had to be Nyktos and Jadis. J okay, <laughs> okay. Nyktos, Jadis, and Nektos. Because like, I love their dynamic. So cute. But Nyktos first because... I just love his personality traits because he's basically Castile, let me remind you. But, you know, I love the fact that although he's technically has his love interest with Serafina, you see this nature of him where he's not ignorant to her faults or mistakes or the things she says that are out of line sometimes. And he's not afraid to tell her, you know, what's wrong and what's right and what she should and shouldn't do. Now, although he does respect her boundaries, he has told her, you know, there are limits to this so just be careful because you are i'm not gonna spoil anything i can't <laughs> but yeah i just like that aspect of his character that he's just really open to sharing those kind of things with her and very respectable of her decision and her choices and her limits as well other th aspects of this book is that i like that it's not a love at first type, sight type thing it's very much a kind of slow burn type thing it's not an instant romance so you're good with that it's spicy because it's adult so just keep that in mind and the last thing is the plot twist at the very, very end. I thought it was really well done. Now, here's the thing. Reading from Blood and Ash, specifically The Crown of Gilded Bones, you have an idea of how this series or these characters will generally end up because they're kind of mentioned in the books. But that being said, what we don't know is how that came to be, like the process of how they ended up there. And so this is where we learn about it. Originally, I had a general idea of like, oh, it's probably goes about like this but knowing the cliffhanger the way it happened it really just threw a wrench into the whole story and my thought process which is interesting because I love those plot twisty suspenseful cliffhangery type moments although it kills me on the inside because you have to wait another year for the next book to come out it is really interesting because it keeps the reader engaged and it's just super suspenseful suspenseful and intriguing the very last argument I have to make for those of you who are saying Castile is somehow not as good as Nytos, you are wrong. Okay, I'm not afraid to argue this. You are wrong. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.